this may look like a surprise to you for those who know me I know people will talk and so many people will call but I'm used to this I'm used to this because even when I first published my book uh, many people called me that uh, you guy what are you doing who who are you <laughs> uh, you were a surveyor and you were into writing you were into publishing but those who know my past uh, I've been really into this I've been really into this for so many years I started uh, researching about the theory of everything the final theory and the quantum gravity when I was uh, in my vacation of S4 uh, that's where in this country then after S4 you are going to S5 then S6 then after S6 you go to the university so I was in my vacation that was uh, far I think it was in 2000 uh, was it 2000 uh, I think 2003 they are 2004 2003 2003 2004 so when I started researching about the things so for those who who hanged out with me know what I am and what I can do about physics and uh, so I'm used to those who criticize and talk too much about what I'm doing but hey <laughs> remember I've made it and I know what I've done and what my dream was to add a mark to solve those unsolvable problems in physics uh, so at least I've done it uh, and uh, my book quantum gravity in a nutshell it is now being used uh, to give a way to testing quantum gravity at least my hypothesis about quantum gravity is now clear to the entire scientific community and when i remember when i, I what, what i told you before that when i published this book uh, my classmates thought that I was going crazy about this. <laughs> they thought I was looking for money, that I was a con man, <laughs> which was wrong. They didn't know. And now what I've done, they see that it is the best way to go. And when you follow your passion, really make a change, a mark in this world. And that's what is happening right now all over the world and all over the news about my best-selling book quantum gravity in a nutshell so I've been telling you that I'll be talking about all I'll be going through explaining chapter by chapter of my book and when this is done I will get other books which I've published on online and I will also go through them chapter by chapter uh, it's a long way to go and uh, you have to be patient because it is not easy to get time like this uh, to, to do something which is unique uh, so today I will take you through chapters and probably part one I think part one it will be over by today of this book but before we begin, I think for those who have this book, remember this is just a manuscript of the book that I wrote. This is just a manuscript of the book. Probably these are like 459 pages of the whole manuscript. The book is available online. You can get it for yourself uh, at a cheaper price. Yeah. This is just a manuscript which I'm going to use to teach you, to lecture you chapter by chapter because you've wanted this for so long and you've really waited, we've been waiting for this to happen. 
so this is going to be good for you and uh, you will enjoy it but before we begin uh, I will take you through the main chapters of this book uh, because it is the board of the book and it's what we are going to teach it's what I'm going to go through so chapter one we shall be solving quantum gravity we shall be solving quantum gravity and I will be teaching you telling you how to do this and uh, chapter two uh, it is murder of German secret cow experimental test of general relativity uh, in chapter two I will be going through the history of how general relativity was tested before all of these uh, machines and software gadgets we have how was it tested how is it leading us astray and why uh, and why are these tests which we had done before making it hard for us to unite quantum mechanics with general relativity and in chapter 3 we shall be talking about what is special this is just a question what is special about the energy density uh, there we shall be talking about many things and why we need the new formula for the energy density then in chapter 3 chapter there was chapter 3 chapter 4 chapter 4 we are talking about particle creation by black holes uh, where i present my new approach to this uh, which i think is better than working this approach then in chapter 5 we are asking is there a limit to how small black holes can become and here I give you the answer which is proven and which is ongoing test by the NASA Fermi data satellite which is based on uh, looking for these black holes and which is gaining momentum every day every day and chapter 6 on the quantum electrodynamics and quantum gravity magnetic field limits and chapter 7 modified gravity or emergent gravity this is a question if you if you are a fan of modified gravity emergent gravity here you can bet then in chapter 8 i am present to you how i resolve the proton radius puzzle which is a very big question and a puzzle in modern physics which has not been solved before and here I give you a proof of it. Then in 9, uh, the Bakkenstein Hawking area entropy law, where I derive the entropy formula of a black hole from first two principles without assuming any, any physical law. This is my making. I derive the entropy law from first principles. Then in chapter 10, I present in your physics. Yeah, new physics beyond the standard model. Then 11, a grand unification where I unite all the forces of physics. Then in chapter 11, in chapter that is 12, uh, is where I unite Bohr and quantum gravity theory. The Bohr atomic theory is united with the quantum gravity theory, and uh, <laughs> there you will see how the universe came from an atom <coughs> to what it is today yeah then in 13 i give you a detailed theory of everything and in 14 the complete theory of light uh, the complete theory of light that is encompassing all from maxwell to where we are today into one theory and then in 15, I'm making sense with semi-classical gravity. And in 16, I give you the art of reductionism. The art of reductionism. Then in 17, I construct a consistent physical theory of nature. And then in chapter 18, I ask a question which I answer. Is there a possibility for man to stay on an atom? Or is it possible that there is a universe in every particle or in every atom? Then in 19, 
there here I chapter is Newton's biggest blunder uh, where I redefine gravity then uh, we have additional readings additional readings which include space-time singularity or quantum black holes what is real uh, is it dark matter mound quantum black holes yeah that's where we go and many 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 others the emergence of gravity or whatever there are many uh, these are probably uh, trend chapters uh, plus the appendix you are going into like 30 chapters so it is a long way to go and you need patience patience is highly recommended for those who are who want to join these lectures these classes which i'm uh, which i'm presenting today uh, the preface of the book, the preface of the book is is clear. I mean, it starts like this. Let me read it for you. There is a need for a book on a quantum theory of gravity that is not directed at specialists, but rather sets out the concepts underlying this subject for a broader scientific audience and conveys joy in their beauty. The author, that's me, has written with this goal in mind and has succeeded admirably. This wonderful and exciting book is optimal for physics graduate students and researchers. The physical explanations are exceedingly well written and integrated with the formulas. Quantum gravity is the next big thing and this book will help the reader understand the use, uh, the reader understand and use the theory. This is my note, the author's note. Our search for ultimate understanding the quantum theory of gravity has long been the quest of such great scientists as aristotle newton einstein hawking and many others and is expected to transform science providing clarity and understanding that is unknown today ideally via one single overlooked principle in nature so far, this quest has produced theories such as a special theory of relativity, general relativity, and quantum mechanics, and such recent proposals as dark matter and dark energy in cosmology. Yet, these all suffer serious internal problems and compatibility issues with each other, introducing even by introducing even more questions, mysteries, and paradoxes, and often even violation of our laws of physics upon closer examination. As a result, the quantum theory of gravity continues to elude us, leaving a fractured and divided scientific community with no clear direction forward. This has also resulted in a mathematization of physics which has resulted in the reduction of the cosmos to a mathematical entity, entity which has not only confused the physics but accounts for their worst and most distracting associations. This book makes a first case for the letter with clear discussions exposing the flaws in the above concepts and more while stepping back to take a good look at the scientific legacy we have inherited. We are probably asking the wrong questions at the moment. Nevertheless, it is impossible to resist the temptation to try. After all, the other fundamental forces except the gravity field penetrate within quantum mechanics. So this book, as you have heard in the preface, it starts with solving quantum gravity in detail. And I quote Einstein, who said that the inter intra-atomic movement of electrons 
atoms would have to radiate not only electromagnetic but also gravitational energy in only in time, if only in tiny amounts. As this is hardly true in nature, it appears that quantum theory would have to modify not only Maxwellian electrodynamics but also the new theory of gravitation. These are not my words, these were the words of the great scientist Albert Einstein. So quantum gravity here must be quantized to make sense. If you, if you want to make sense in the, in, in the way we understand physics from the first point of view, we have really to understand quantum mechanics and quantum gravity and how we can match them together to make meaning out of the universe we live in. Uh, the f this first chapter is very good and it is interesting uh, with many clear diagrams which will make sense to you. <coughs> the development of a quantum theory of gravity began in 1989. 18, 1899. Can you imagine? The development of quanta of a quantum theory of gravity began began in 1899 with Max Planck's formulation of Planck's scales of mass, time and length. And you can imagine the entire scientific community has not even thought of uniting it together, uniting quantum mechanics with gravity. And it's only me <laughs> who are they are criticizing who has done it from 1899. These guys have been funded. They have wasted taxpayers' money trying to prove something which they don't really understand. And they've forgotten that someone who is independent of them, who is not in their caliber, who is a loner, can do this and that's what they are forgetting as that's where they are getting all this wrong they are buried into mathematical formulas which can even help them abstract mathematics which can't make sense and here is a simple formula like Newton's law of gravity's formula, simple formula, which explains all, which unites quantum mechanics with general relativity. Let us go ahead. The development of the quantum theory of gravity began in 1899 with Max Planck's formulation of Planck's scales of mass, time, and length. During this period, the theories of quantum mechanics, quantum field theory, and general relativity had not yet been developed. This means that Planck himself had no idea about what he had just developed behind the blackboard in quotes. Planck was not aware of quantum gravity and what it would mean for physicists, but he had just coined in a formula one of the starting point for the whole grail of modern physics. The beginning of quantum gravity as we had had started in 1899 with Planck's units of mass, time and length. It never begin, it never began with the quantum gravity, it never began with the string theory, it never began with any mathematical theory as you see them today. Black just thought of something which is simple, elegant and universal that could not be disproved by these new theories and he put it on paper. 
So if you were if you were starting from loop quantum gravity string theory, you are going nowhere. You have to go back to the fundamentals and see how quantum gravity has been developing, how it was developed. Before you bring in the mathematization of physics, which is complicated and which can't solve anything. Those guys before us, the giants on which I'm standing today, the giants on which I'm standing today, and who are those giants who have made this book possible. If you look at Newton's law of gravity, the formula itself, the product of mass divided by the square of the distance between the masses, it is simple. It is not abstract math. It is not complicated. But when Einstein came in, it confused the whole scientific community that the only way to go is to develop a mathematical theory. This is wrong. Physicists don't think like that. A physicist is someone who looks at nature in the way it behaves and he comes out with a formula which can't be derived from other laws or other theories. A universal formula. It's not about mathematics, it's not about the math. It's about connecting the dots of the universe. And on those grounds is where I'm standing.